Welcome to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. Build Your Best Business brings you the stories of entrepreneurs along the entrepreneurial journey. What does it take to successfully start, manage, grow, and eventually exit a business? And we're going to firmly be in the category of managing and growing today as I talk with a sort of long-term friend. I think I've known Kelly God, five or six years now. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. So Kelly has a veto. She is the, what do you call yourself? The founder of She's Got Systems or? That works. Because both like, you know, it's crazy veto is most of your uh, social media presences. <laughs> yeah, most of it's just under my name. Yeah, yeah. So Kelly, Kelly as veto. I'm saying that right. Yes. As a veto. Yeah. Yes. So Kelly, tell us a little bit about what she's got systems does. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how that applies to making sure your business grows successfully. Yeah, I'm a big believer that entrepreneurs Um, are so independent, we like to do things our own way, but that we can really make it hard for ourselves because we don't want to conform, we don't want to have structure. And the result of that is as you're building this business, this wonderful thing that you love, it can be very chaotic. And sometimes that's good, we thrive on the energy, but it can become troubling if you can't take a weekend off, or you don't get to spend time with your family, or you, you can't even get sick, or like you mentioned, eventually retire because your business needs you so much. And yeah. so with She's Got Systems, we take the things that you already are doing in your business that work and that you love, and we create a system out of them so you can get help, you can delegate or automate the things that you do, which just gives you more time and creative space to expand or take a break. And yeah. we do that through all areas of business. Yeah, it's it's a funny um balance because you you become an entrepreneur potentially because you didn't like corporate world you wanted to be out on your own and there shouldn't be any rules and i'll just do whatever and then you realize you've got to have some of that right i mean if you're going to bring anybody Mm -hmm. else to help you run the business if you ever want to take a break if you ever want to give something to somebody there there's a reason for the structure like larger companies yeah yeah they have these silly things like hour meetings that always take an hour for no reason. And, and so you get caught up in that. Right. But there are tenants of why those businesses have been successful that get into repeatable and all those kind of processes that are important. Yeah. It's a big catch 22 because I hear from people all the time who say, I, I really want to delegate and get stuff off my plate, but they're going to do it wrong. Yeah. And, and it's because people do things wrong because they can't read your mind. Right. And so the system is just putting down what you would like them to do so that you're no longer the bottleneck and you don't have your team members asking you questions every five minutes, which just takes way more time and energy than doing it yourself. Well, I get they're going to do it wrong. Uh, they're going to and I sometimes say, well, they'll do it differently. That doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Like it may be different. It could be better, right? And then I do have entrepreneurs who will hide out in certain tasks because they like them Mm -hmm. and it's what makes them important to the company. So if they teach somebody else, it's like, well, what do I do? It's like, well, you you run strategy. You actually get the business to the next level and think the big ideas. So how'd you get into this? Are you one of those, (laughs) one of those from birth, like organizing your toothbrushes and stuff? Probably. Um, I like to blame my dad, who's an engineer. And so I grew up just knowing like, this is the way you pack the car. This is the way you (laughs) set up a bookshelf. Um, But I think it also came really naturally because my brother in the same environment, you know, he was the kid at the grocery store who would like pull all the candy and be like, mom, I want this. I want this. And then when she said like, no, put it back. And he threw it back. I would then straighten up all the candy bars. (laughs) So I come to that very naturally, but I really got into this specifically because I was working at a company. It was during the recession. It's not getting paid a lot. And they said, you're doing so great. Like you set up all these systems for the position. You're not making mistakes. You're the best person we've ever had in this position. So we're cutting your hours and pay by 20%. Wow. You're so efficient. Like go home. Right. (laughs) And I, I started working with entrepreneurs because I knew that they were people who would appreciate moving faster. Yeah. And actually pay more when you could accomplish something in less time. And the traditional corporate model is like, as long as you're here 40 hours a week, I don't care what you do, drove me nuts. Yeah. And I just wanted to like go do more things. So I started working for entrepreneurs, kind of managing the business on the back end and was really fortunate. I started working with companies that were already at the million dollar mark and really see what they were doing differently. 
And honestly, they were still sometimes a complete mess. Yeah, so right. getting to help yeah, them you set I, out, clean you, that up. You and I were talking about this before the show and the company I'm working with way more than a million. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I do not know how, and they've just survived it, right? Like they've just gotten, yeah. they just keep chugging through. But they they do. I like your uh, observation that in a company that's more entrepreneurial or small business minded, when they keep running into the same problem over and over again, they want it solved. It does. It's not like yeah. the thing I need to do today. They don't see it that way. They see it as a roadblock. Mm-hmm. Like this is getting in my way of making progress yeah. and moving forward. And a big company, that's just my job. Like every day, I come in and I punch this thing. You know, I do the same yeah. thing over and over again. That is what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. It's a very different. Yeah, and as long thought. as I fill these hours and look like I'm busy, great. Yeah. Oh, no. I I knew I couldn't do that for too long. So (laughs) I left working in corporate back in 2000, I think it was 2011 or 2010 was the last time I worked a nine to five, four day a week type job. Yeah, Yeah, because you were so efficient, you kept bringing, (laughs) you would have an extra day left. And and that was a good like kick in the pants to, to build what I have now, because the one day I was home, I was working and hustling on figuring out what I was going to do and you know, what was next for me. And this is what came out of that. So uh, what are some things that, so some common breaking points, reasons that people mm-hmm. come to you or decide that yeah. they need to reach out? And because what I find, because I do operational and marketing work and on the marketing side, mm-hmm. it's easier. It's almost easier to sell because the operational yeah. side, they have to admit to me that there's something broken, broken, right? So yeah. what, what are some of the key reasons that come to you? I think the the most obvious one to like pinpoint because it's it's also kind of amusing when it comes up is um, someone will be like I'm pregnant and I'm like <laughs> okay I didn't have anything to do with that and they're like yeah but I kind of want to take maternity leave like that would be great I'm right like, okay so a lot of time a lot of times a lot of times something big coming um, where you you want to have more time right um, and and that could be um, you know hey my kid's going off to college and I want to spend the summer together but I don't want to be stuck in my business every day. Um, and usually I find that people really turn to this work when they reach a breaking point of just being fed up with the way things are going because we are so trained, especially through social media, to tell everyone at all times that the business is great, sales are great, we're doing wonderfully, look at me on vacation. And then behind the screens, what we're usually doing is we're like at the beach, we'll go take a selfie, and then we'll go inside and work on our laptop the rest of the vacation <laughs> while telling everyone things are great. Yeah. And at some point, people just get tired of lying to themselves and saying, this is what I wanted. Right. This is going great. And they're like, OK, it's not what I wanted. And I'm either going to retire and like have retirement money for a week or so, or I'm going to go back to the corporate world but I'm pretty sure I deleted the file that had my resume on it like a decade ago and I'm not employable anymore and I can't do that or I'm going to have to fix this. Yeah. And so sometimes they fix it by bringing on employees. Sometimes they fix it by looking at software, but it's really a core problem of how you're doing things in the operation of your business has to change if you're going to actually love working in your business again. And it's not going to be solved with awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the the crazy thing about it is, you know, there's this this mind shift thought of a business should work for you. And when mm-hmm. you start a business, often entrepreneurs they're like I work for the bu-. no, 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 no. You yeah. built the business, you are working the business works for you, you don't work for the business. But you also work for a crazy person, which is yourself. <laughs> and that's never going to give you a raise that won't pay you for working weekends that won't let you have vacation time. Like you're doing this to yourself. Right. And it's really easy to get caught up in that because as entrepreneurs, we're like, I'm about to hustle. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I love my business. I love my clients. I love my team. I'm going to make it happen. And in doing so, you just slowly build up this misery that you think you can't break away from yeah. and you can. I love it when I hear back from my clients. One of them was, um, I think her son was a few days old when she checked in after giving birth. And she said, so I'm sitting here nursing, seeing that all our clients are taken care of, emails are being handled and money's coming in the door and I'm just sobbing. And I'm like, well, that's probably hormones, but (laughs) it's that feeling of you could be doing the thing that you absolutely want to be doing with your time and your business hasn't fallen apart. 
Right. And most entrepreneurs just don't know that that's a possibility for them until they see other people do it. And it doesn't have to happen when you have a million dollar business. You can do it at every stage. And you should, you should always think about how do you scale it that way? So when you go in, like, is there an approach you're taking? Are you, is it therapy? Like, how do you get them started down the path to the path to to the right way? Yeah, I usually want to ask, like, what are the big things that are bothering you right now? Like, what's holding your business back or holding you back? Because like you mentioned, it might be something the owner's doing because they don't think they can give it up. And it might be just something that isn't isn't that important to the bottom line or their time, but just weighs on them. Right. So we try to look for those first easy wins of like, what are the things that if we could get that solved, you would feel a lot lighter and feel like you could take on anything else. And sometimes we're creating a system around a big book launch or a program launch. Sometimes it's just bringing on and training up a team, but it really will depend on how much you really want to transform your business and what areas of your business to get started, because that's going to be the biggest challenge is really what areas you're willing to open up. So I kind of see myself like that professional organizer who comes into your house and you're probably going to be like, oh, we're just going to look at the kitchen and you've got all the other doors closed. But once that trust is built up, you'll be like, okay, I'm going to show you the garage. That There's is, so, a mess that the is garage. so funny. Yeah, that's totally. And, and, and really... I'm the organizer who's like, yes, I love garages. Let's go look at the garage. <laughs> and then they open up and you're like, okay, what do we want to do in this space? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because you do hide those spaces. Like I remember like one of the last things I gave up control of in one of my companies was the finances. And when mm-hmm. I brought in the person to do it, I was like, I'm going to show you this. I have never shown anyone this ever. And she's like, yeah. okay, you can trust me. I'm like, all right, I'm, we're opening it up. So, yeah. and, and you do have these things. And those are the ones, cause I, that was really sort of, I was the only one looking at it. I was the only one who understood right. it, you know, those kind of things. And I yeah. had to get it outside of my head to be able to really take a vacation. Like you talked yeah. about, we, we would take vacations. My wife was, um, ran our books and we would have to find somewhere to pull over and do payroll and do the accounts payable, <laughs> yeah, accounts receivable. And yeah. this was before it was that easy to do it, right? Like this was, it was yeah. harder to do those things. So yeah, mm-hmm. we're going to go to commercial break. And I want to talk a little bit about, you've written some books, you've got another one in the process, like how your systems have helped you take that time. Because that's something that I think yeah. really people struggle with is how do I break away to do something so significant? So mm-hmm. talking today with Kelly Esvito, she is, we, she's, with She's Got Systems, listening to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzkoff. We'll be back in just a minute. Eric, tell us about Lightering Works. So Lightering Works is a company that helps other businesses in one of two ways. Okay. So your company is either growing and you're not exactly sure how to keep up. So you need to scale operations, maybe raise some money, those kind of things. So growing too fast. Growing too fast. Okay. Or, yeah, growing too fast. You got okay. kind of structural, you walk in every day, there's a fire. Uh, you've been doing it longer than three years or a thousand days and you still feel like you can't step away from the business and take a vacation. So we help companies on that side. So sort of operational support, looking at their financing, seeing if there's a way that we can help them you know, get to the next level. Or you're a company that's not doing any marketing at all. So you are maybe stalled. Your business has gotten to a certain level. You make a certain amount of money every year, but you've never gotten above that. And we come in and build marketing structure. So both of them are operational at the end of the day. It's about creating a process and a way to approach it that's strategic. Uh, It's that uh, owners don't often know how to do both of those. So they're really good at sales, which means they may need operational structure because they're out signing more customers than they know what to do with. Or they built a beautiful product that's the best kept secret. And so they need somebody to come in and help them market that product. And so that's the kind of businesses we look for. We come in as a stopgap and we work with a company for somewhere around 12 to 18 months typically, uh, solve those problems for them and leave them better than we found them. And we're back. You're listening to 
Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzko. I'm talking today with Kelly Esvito. She is founder, organizer extraordinaire for She's Got Systems. One thing that Kelly's done that a lot of people I talk with have wanted to do is not only you, you've written a few nonfiction books, you're in the middle of writing mm-hmm. a fiction book too. And, yeah. you know, I many entrepreneurs, they do have stories in them. Yeah, I mean, to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you've got some story and they're like, yeah, someday I'd like to, it's that whole, I'm going to retire. I'm going to go play golf. I'm going to go write a book. Yeah. Writing a book requires that you can take some very dedicated time away from your business. Mm-hmm. So, t- so how did you, did you just, I mean, yeah. you seem like such a good organized person. Like, yeah. is that one of the goals you've seen people ask you around? Yeah, I think that when it comes to a bigger project like a book or some people want to write a course or they want to do a big speaking event, um, it really does create a opportunity for you to build space. And it's just something that you really can't do 10 minutes before you run to the grocery store or while you're waiting in line to pick up your kid from soccer. It just, it, when you're creating something that has that kind of like permanence, right? You want it to reflect the best of what you have. And that just requires more time. Yeah. And the way that I explain that to people is I'm like, listen, if you're an architect building like the White House, you better spend more time planning that than if I went into my backyard and built a birdhouse. <laughs> right. And so a birdhouse has its benefits, but to me that's a little bit like a newsletter, a blog post. It's short, it's compact, has a purpose, but it doesn't have the permanence of something like a book. Yeah. And so when I was writing um, the first series, um, which is Every Entrepreneur Needs Systems, and I really tried to take that like one chapter at a time because they're very siloed. It's not like a a novel where if you don't read chapter one, chapter 10 doesn't make sense. But I tried to work on that pretty consistently and really get down to what's the most important thing I can convey. And then with most chapters, there was a bonus or, or an added resource. So I was not only building the book and the chapters, but then um, the resource and the gifts for buyers as well. Yeah. So that was just something that I did in 2016 and published three books that year which was a big project. It was pretty much our marketing focus for that year um, and took a lot of energy. But what I usually tell people around marketing is that you can try doing all the marketing things, but you're probably not going to do all of them well. Right. Yeah. So focus on the things that you do want to do and that are important and cut out everything else. Well, and get them so, to a system. Marketing is a system at the end of the day. If yeah. you do it, and it, but it takes, you have to exercise the muscle. So you have to kind of get it going yeah. and then it becomes one of those things that just happens in a better way. Yeah. yeah. And it, you can, you can get into the habit and routine of it. You can kind of do some things in, in bulk if you like, um, like, you know, whether it's recording videos or writing blog posts or, you know, creating social media content. But at the end of the day, when it's something that is going to require you to put in a lot of time, you really have to set that up. Um, And then this year, as I'm working on this fiction book I've been developing, it's for me about getting like time totally away. So I started back in March. um, I had booked three, you know, like three days off and I went out of town. I didn't have my dogs. I didn't connect to the Internet. I didn't bring books with me. I really did nothing but write for four days. Yeah. And at the end of four days, starting with nothing but an outline, I had 40,000 words of a novel, oh, wow. which was just insane. Um, so I, I kind of use that as a strategy where I work on it, I edit, I develop the outline. And then I, my own process, what I figured out working on this is I just have to get out of town. Yeah. Um, if I try to do it at home, there will always be something, something that I to do. cleaning, painting, friends dropping over. So for me, what works is really to get out of town. And in order to do that, my business has to be set up in a way that if I'm not there for a couple of days, things don't fall apart. Yeah. Your, your approach is very similar with my book. I, uh, I have a trailer, an RV, like that yeah. we pull behind our car. And uh, when I wrote the first section of it, I had my wife and daughter, we went off to the mountains and they dropped me off in the RV for a week. So I was there from, they, I think they left on Saturday and they came and picked mm-hmm. me up the following Saturday. So I lived on the RV for a week. I had enough food for the week. And all yeah. I did that entire week was get up, sleep, eat and write. That was it. Yeah. And just, and I had terrible internet, like 
it was yeah. it only came on at certain points of the day that I could even upload because I wanted just I just wanted it to upload stuff back and up. be like yeah like, you know back it up <laughs> right? so like I don't, yeah but having those blocks of time because for something big and creative like that you got to have that and then mm-hmm. have you read uh, Stephen King's a memoir on a memoir on yeah. writing and so he talks yeah. about like writing it but then putting it away right like getting away mm-hmm. from it and then coming back and reading it again and kind of and yeah. thinking about it you you've got to have that time you've got to build that in for yeah. anything it Absolutely. could be a book anything in your life that you want to do significantly so yeah and i tell people like this isn't something that has to be a really expensive endeavor and i i looked at a lot of locations and i decided not to go anywhere new not to go anywhere fun because if i booked a retreat and went to hawaii i would be on the beach i'd be exploring i would be doing anything but writing you almost have to go someplace that's a little boring or secluded where you're not going to have those same temptations to work on anything but your project. Yeah, I think I it was October and I think I was the only trailer in this like <laughs> park in Alabama. <laughs> So, you were probably secluded. I was very secluded. I was not shining secluded. <laughs> but but yeah. a little, little close. That's the risk. Yeah. yeah don't, go, don't go full Jack Nicholson. <laughs> so as you think about, uh, you know, I mean, operations, processes, systems is such sort of a, a tried and true thing. You know, it's like you got to have them. So the changes that I see are maybe, you know, there's so many tools online and so many things available. Yeah what's yeah. your recommendation? Like, do you, are you for people trying lots of different things and cobbling them together? Do you think they should find like yeah. one that's like self certain Like, how do you think about that? Yeah. I think the difficult thing with systems is we think like, well, you could systematize everything. And again, I kind of view it like organizing where if you start the process by going out and buying a bunch of tools, you're going to feel overwhelmed and then probably run out of time and money very quickly to utilize everything. So the first process is really like whatever you're looking at your systems is just to clear out the things that aren't working and make sure that you have almost like that clean slate to build on. And then instead of looking for a software or tool, because those will try to convince you to do it their way, I want entrepreneurs to just understand what do you want? And, and that's really hard because it's sometimes that like the design challenge of like, you're looking at an empty room and you're like, well, what do you like? And you're like, oh crap, I have to make decisions. <laughs> but, but you know this and, and somebody who knows systems can help pull it out of you. So, um, you know, what do you like to share on social media? Right. How often do you want your team members to check in with you? Um, when you're doing your invoices, what should that look like? Like, you just know this stuff because you've been running your business successfully and you have opinions. Yeah. So if you just say what you want to have happen and write that down, then that's the point where I would say look for software that can automate it for you or look for a tool. I find a lot of people get stuck in two areas. Either they've got a really big project and they don't know how to break it down. And so like every year for five years, they're writing a book. Right. And, and it's because like they get stuck on things like, well, I don't know what publisher I should choose. I'm like, but you haven't written the book. <laughs> so <laughs> right. you probably need to like at least outline the book. Um, so they get too in the details and they're just not breaking it down into milestones. Or they think they have to have everything documented, everything broken down, everything in their calendar before they get started. Yeah. And so when I work with people, especially one-on-one or in our small group, I tend to say, what can you do like to get to the first like milestone? What is the first big chunk of deciding or figuring this out that we need to work on? And then let's work, let's just make a list of everything that you can worry about later. Right. Um, Because it's a little bit like somebody saying, you know, I'm going to be a famous singer someday, but they haven't recorded any music because they're so worried about what dress they're going to wear to the award show for the, like nomination they haven't gotten for the song they haven't written for the deal they haven't gotten. And I'm like, you are so worried about the step, you know, five years down the line that you're never going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, a, those excuses, that kind of excuse management. Oh, yeah. piece. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy because it, to some extent you can keep going the way you're going things like you're not going to die if you don't do this but you also won't be happy. You also won't have that fulfillment or the freedom that you wanted or just the space to work on what you love 
And in some areas, that's where I see people get really, really frustrated because they believe that this business was going to give them everything. And then it starts feeling like a burden. Yeah. And you know, start to resent it. And what you're talking about is such an important, yes. So it becomes a job or a prison or whatever. So there's that mm-hmm. side of it. The challenge that I've, I personally have run into, and I've seen some, some entrepreneurs mm-hmm. run into is not knowing what you want at the end of the day with the business. So yeah. I've operationalized businesses to where I didn't need to go there. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, I don't have to go anymore. Like I'm just sort of a, a figurehead. You know, they like yeah. that I show up. But then of course I lost my identity a little bit in that too. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, but I'm the one who used to do the following thing. So yeah. it's, in, it, and we never think about the, or we rarely think about the end. Like what's the end result mm-hmm. you're looking for, right? Where is it that you want to yeah. be in that? And, and, you know, entrepreneurs tend to be workaholics. We like to yeah. wear the badge of honor and think about that. So as you start that business, like yeah. where are you headed with it? Yeah. And and somebody once told me in an interview that they would, um, if they had more time because they had automated or delegated, they wouldn't, they wouldn't relax. They would just work harder. And I said, well, that's admirable, but have you ever gotten sick? Yeah. And And this was somebody before they had a family and now with young children, they would say to me, oh, I really love that these systems are in place because now I can take my kid and do this or that. So yeah. it, it can be hard because sometimes we are so in it. And I mean, it takes up every consuming thought we have and we even dream about it that we can't see any other way. So I usually tell people to trust the process to get that space. And sometimes you just need the space to decide what you're going to do next. It could yeah. be something like a fiction book. It could be traveling the world could just be napping. I don't know yet, but neither do you. And if you really get to that point where you say like you did, like, okay, I'm just a figurehead and I really miss doing this piece of the business. There's nothing that says you can't pick that up again. Right. Well, and it gives you choice. You can't reincorporate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get the choice that you thought you had when you left corporate. Right. Yep. You get to say, and I, that's what I I would pick the things in the projects I loved and I would horn myself (laughs) into them. I'm like, I own the company. I want to do, I want to work on this one. I only want to do this part of it. Nobody says to the boss, like, no, this is my job. (laughs) Right. They're probably like, thank you. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. This is hard stuff. And I love your expertise on it. But it, it, and that's because, um, one of the reasons that one of the books I wrote was about mindset is because so much of what we deal with as business owners, isn't just about, numbers, right and wrong choice. It's also about letting go and trusting people and being in the right space to make those decisions because, you know, we like to talk about how like a business maybe doesn't necessarily have a soul as an entity, but when you are the business, when everything that you do is put into the business, everything that hangs you up, everything that stops you um, in your life is also going to stop your business from moving forward. So if you have a trouble Amen. like building strong relationships, <laughs> your business may have that same issue. Yes. So we've got to like work on ourselves and not just that we work on ourselves so our business can thrive, but because it's healthy. And that can be hard for some entrepreneurs to understand. Absolutely. In, in all these interviews that I've done, their entrepreneurs fall into two categories. They're rectifying something or magnifying. So they're either rectifying a problem from their past through their business or magnifying something that uh, they... Uh, that was good or whatever. They're, they're so tied into it. You got to know who the founder is to, to get them there and to get them to start doing the systems, to think about them, to like, like understand that they yeah. need the help. Is the patient ready? So, well, Kelly, thank yeah, you I so much that. for joining me. We, you and I have yeah. a very similar sort of uh, belief in the world. I believe everything's operational at the end of the day, no matter what it is, you got to figure out how to make it work and wish you the greatest of luck as you continue. Thanks for having me. I can't ra- wait to read the fiction book. <laughs> me neither I can't wait to finish it <laughs> well that's what I've heard is fun about that is that it's depending upon how you write it you don't necessarily know how where it's going to go some people know and some are like kind of let it take its own path and that sounds fun yeah. so so I've been talking today with Kelly Isvito she is she's got systems you can find her as crazy as crazy of how do you say it crazy of Vito we used to say crazy Vito crazy Vito yes K-A-K-R-A-Z-E-V-E-D-O did that right yes mm-hmm. Uh, And we'll put all of her information and her books in the show notes. You've been listening to Build Your Best Business. Until next time, what are you going to build a system around so that your your business runs better?